Hi, I'm Kayleigh and I'm an arts tutor for South Lanarkshire Leisure and Culture. And today we are using our acrylic paints to go into a little bit of impasto techniques. Um, so it's a little bit out of some people's comfort zones, but it's all about experimenting and having fun with the paints today. We're going to be doing a little fish um, and just trying out lots of different materials to create some cool techniques with our, um, with our paints. Let's get started. We are going to paint this fish today and within it there's so many amazing textures to look at. You've got your scales, you've got all the different colours, you've got the colour blends um, and even the, on the top of the fin here as well. Um, so we're going to look at the technique in pasto and in pasto is used quite a lot, um, especially with acrylics and oil paints and you'll find probably the most famous person that's done it is Van Gogh. Um, he used it a lot, especially like kind of a lot of his skies you could see all the brush strokes. So it basically just means you can see it uses really, really thick paint and you can see the brush strokes come through or you can use other tools as well to do it. So today what I'm going to use is I've got some big brushes, I've got some little brushes and they're quite coarse. Um, so the kind of coarser the brush, the more you can see the brush stroke come through. I've got some just standard brushes as well, some small ones, bigger ones. Um, and then I've got a palette knife. So if you've got a palette knife, this is ideal. You can use it to sort of push your paint about on your page. You can also use it to mix your paint. Um, if you don't have a palette knife, you can use anything from a glue spreader to a credit card to just a cut up piece of card like that. So actually just cut a bit out from your paper and you can use it to sort of push the paint about. I'll do a little demo of that along the way, um, but mainly I'm going to be using a palette knife. So anything that's kind of thin and flat. Um, first of all, I'm going to just draw my fish out with some pencil just so you can see what it is in the page and, um, and then we'll go on and paint it afterwards. So when you're drawing it, you're just looking for your shapes. Fish are normally just quite oval um, with a couple of triangles for the tail um, and this fin up the top is quite nice. It sort of follows it around. So just have a little look at your proportions where your eye sits towards your mouth. Um, and any sort of gills that are in fins that can kind of come off, they're quite nice. Um, I'm going to do it quite big on the page because we're going to practice our impasto technique.
Okay, so I'm quite happy with the outline of my fish. You're going to cover over it with your paints anyway. The acrylics are so thick, you're going to go right over the top. But at least I know where things roughly are at the moment and where my colours are going to go. The first thing I'm going to do is just paint in the background. Um, the background I want to be quite muted, not too much going on. Um, although the background in here has got bits of pink in it, I'm probably not going to go too overboard with those being bright because we want the pink and yellow of our fish to stand out. So a good thing to do when you're just looking for a kind of plain background is choose something that's opposite in the colour wheel um, and then it just gives it the brightness that it needs. Um, so colours that aren't there are like a blue or a blue-green. Um, so I'll probably mix up just a kind of blue-green colour and um, make it a little bit pastel -y as well just so that it sort of blends into the background. So what I'm going to do is I'll use my big brush for this. I'm going to take a big bit of white. And then a bit of blue. Maybe we hint the green as well. And just mix that together. And I might go through and put some little pink bits in the background anyway afterwards um, just to sort of tie it all in but it's not necessary the, the main thing we're practicing today is the textures on the fish um, so this is just so that we've not got a stark white background feel free to go and add in as many details as you want you could have a full reef going on This yellow paint goes everywhere. Um, right, okay, so I'm going to get a bit of a wet brush and just use what's on my palette knife as well. At least not want not. Brush is maybe a little bit wet there, to be honest. Did add some more paint. And I'm not overly bothered what direction my brush strokes are going in or anything. Again, we're mainly focusing on the fish. Um, and I'd rather go over my fish a little bit, over the lines, because we don't want a white glow ending up around the outside. So try and go over your fish rather than leave any white areas. And depending on how textured your paper is, you might have some little bits shining through that work quite well. You might have some that are really smooth as well. You've got a smoother paper. There we go. That's our background in. Um, so give your palette knife a little wash. You can just dip it in the water and wipe it clean or you can just scrape the paint off with the, the paper towel. Okay, now let's get mixing some colours. So within my fish I've got some red, some yellows, some orange, some pink and a wee bit of purple as well. Um, so I'm just going to start experimenting by mixing some colours. I'm going to take my palette knife. You can use your brush to do this as well. Um, in some ways I think sometimes a brush has more control. I'm just going to take three wee dollops of white and then we can start mixing some colours in. If you've got a magenta or a pink of any sort, then you can just use that rather than having to mix your pink. Um, I would say that's pretty much magenta out of the, the packet. Go. 
cool. I quite like that pink. It's quite nice. And then we mix a purpley kind of shade this time. It's a wee bit red, wee bit blue. Let's see where we get to. Probably need a little bit more white in this. And just keep mixing until you get the colour you're looking for. Um, it might take a few shots. Try and mix a fair amount of them as well because we are going to be working quite thick with the paint. Um, and when you run out of colour, it's quite difficult to remix the same colours. Right, I'm going to stop there, quite like that purpley colour. Now the idea of painting in pastel isn't necessarily getting complete realism in your picture. So don't expect to be doing a photographic example of this fish. Um, we're looking at texture, we're looking at the, the texture of the scales here. So how are we going to get that using impasto? And we're looking at texture on the fins as well. Right, I'm going to mix up a little bit of orange and then let's get started. So when you're mixing your orange, one thing to remember is use lots of yellow and the tiniest little bit of red. It's probably actually too much red. <laughs> yeah, so potent. Instead of, to make it lighter, I just add more yellow. Don't try and add more white to it to lighten it or anything. You want to just be adding a little bit more yellow. Colour mixing is just a wee bit of practice. There's, unless you want to start measuring out paints in a precise fashion. This makes perfect. Go. I'm okay with that yeah, that orange. I'll probably just use a little bit of it. It'll be mainly yellow I use anyway for those areas. Just clean the palette knife as much as I can. Um, so I'm going to go straight in with the palette knife. I'm not going to wait about too much because. I don't want to start putting a brush in there and getting too precise with things. I'm just going to go straight in and let's get some purple on here. I'm just using the edge of my palette knife. Marking in roughly where it is. Now, I've gone over the eye a little bit. That's okay um, because we'll be putting that in at the end anyway. go into the pink. I've not even washed my palette knife. I'm just going to go straight in. Mark that on. And almost mix it on the page a little bit as well. Now this should just be almost fun to do. <laughs> Shouldn't be thinking too much about, oh it doesn't look like the picture. Or it's not quite what it looks like there having a bit of fun with it and trying to get paint, build up those paint layers and the more paint layers we put on the more texture you get. Put my pink going all the way up. Go back in my purple again. A bit of orange. And if you find everything smudging together too much, just leave that bit and come back to it. And just try and be confident if you can with your, your palette knife strokes. I'm 
We're going to focus mainly on the body and we'll do the fins and the tail after. So try a few different things with your palette knife. You can dab it on like this. See all those bits of paint coming up? It's like an Arctic ceiling. You can go from the side and down like this, or you can go from the top and down like this. This is your chance to experiment. It's the first layer as well, so a lot of the first layer is almost building up texture. Oh, look at that yellow blending in with the pink, that's quite nice. I like that. So these little dabs with my palette knife are working quite nicely, I think. I'm going to do that all the way over the yellow. I'm just dab in the front. If you've got like a glue spreader or a card or something, or even just a bit of paper, um, you can do the same. It all, all works the same. Just certain things you'll have more control over or you'll prefer. Add a wee bit more at the top here. A bit orange. If you dip into your orange now, then you're going to get a nice blend into your yellow. And if you've got oil paints, this will work the same. You can use your oil paints to do this. You can also use different mixing mediums. Um, so you do get like kind of gel mediums that are quite nice to mix with this and it gets you an even better in pastel technique um but it's it's fun enough just doing it with straight acrylics the main thing you want to avoid is any water if you can try and not get any water within this then the blend will be so much nicer um because you'll just get paint on paint i'm gonna go in and put a little bit of white in here and down the bottom so the bottom part is a bit smoother so the texture down here is a lot smoother than over here where it's quite dotted so, I'm just going to go in with the white, be quite smooth with it. So that's a good thing about using different materials, is you can different effects as well. So you could use your palette knife for this area. You could use your card for this area. Put in a little bit for the eye. edge of things works really well as well. You can almost draw with the edge of the palette knife or the edge of a card. Look a little bit at the top here. Just going to dot it on. Some lighter bits in the yellow up here as well. Okay, I'm so happy with this technique here. I'm going to go into my pink and add that one here as well. Um, get that same texture going. My pink's definitely a wee bit more past the leave in the, the picture but I quite like it. If you want it bolder you can add a wee bit more red or even when you're mixing it just a lot less white. The more white the more pastel it goes. Now that's lovely because I've got little bits of orange shining through but still keeping the texture. Mm -hmm. 
go back into my purple as well. It's a bit smoother, this bit. Managed to get a wee bit orange in the front bit there. So what you can do is you can either scrape that off with your palette knife if you get a wee mistake, or you can just let it dry and go over it. Scraped off the main bit and we'll go over it afterwards. Um, right, okay, so the fins. So the fins, we'll start with the, the tail actually. And just have a little go at using the side of your palette knife to sort of bring that out and see how that looks. See if you're happy with that quite like that. And again, do you know what? It's not complete realism with the picture, but it gives a really lovely effect. And sometimes drawing and painting is just about experimenting. It's not about having the most realistic picture. So try and relax into it if you can and just enjoy making the marks. I'm going to put a line of yellow just along the top. This is quite a pastel yellow, so I might mix a wee bit of white and yellow together for this sort of area. This is great for your colour mixing great for just trying what works and what doesn't work. If you've got different paints as well, by all means try a few different yellows. You might find that a lemon yellow or um, might be better than a cadmium. If you go over the top a bit, you can either bring the fin up or you can go over it with your background. I'm quite like that, so I'm sweeping my palette knife up. I've painted this fish so many times and I do it differently every time because it's got so much going on with it. It's starting to come together a wee bit now. We've got the full shape of our fish in. Bring a wee bit of pink up the bottom there. Um, when the paint's drying as well, you can use your palette knife to sort of mark parts in it, like this. So you're almost using it to scrape certain bits of paint off as well. And this is great um, experience for any sort of picture. So if you're doing a landscape and you wanted to scratch out little bits of trees it's not always just a straightforward just painting. Sometimes you want to add on these little textured bits. Um, and it's amazing if you go into an art gallery and you see up close a lot of painters, what they've done and some of the techniques, some of the little scratchy bits. And it's really nice. Right, let's go for a wee bit of pink.
just need to mix up some more paint. You can go and mix up a bit of a darker purple, I think, just put underneath. Oh, that's quite nice. I'm just deciding my palette knife and then sort of mark bits out of it as well. Cool. What I'm going to do is let that dry and then once it's dry we'll go in and do another layer on top. So it's mainly dry, there's still some bits that are a bit wet, but um, time for another layer. So what I've got here is just a scrap sheet of paper. Um, I'm just going to fold it up into a kind of thick bit of card. Um, well, actually, so that's quite good. So I've got a little bit that's actually hanging out, and that's going to give me quite a nice texture. So I'm going to use this just to put in a wee bit of paint, show you how that works. Um, let's just see. So this works the same as if you're using the side of a credit card. Just got a little bit of paint, no water, no nothing. Um, and then you can just so I paint that on from the bottom. So what this is doing is there's still a wee bit of white paint and it's actually blending it quite nicely um, up from the bottom. So you could do that all the way along. There is a wee bit of a white glow right the way along it at the bottom. If you're finding you're getting a little bit of paint, you can either wipe it off or you can fold another bit. Um, I'm going to go in and take a little bit of purple, sort of bring it down into the white. Now some of the paint's dried underneath and you're getting a beautiful texture coming through. Um, it's kind of lumpy, it's got little hints of white and purple. It's been sort of scraped back. So if you're wanting to keep it smooth, then you can. You can add another layer on top and sort of smooth it out. It depends what direction you put the paper in as well. So if you're going like this, so it gives it a smooth texture. Whereas if you're bringing it down, you get more of the kind of bumpy bit going in, which is quite nice. So I'm just going to soften that white line a little bit. It's looking a bit stark. Pull this down. Um, if you've got a little bit of pink as well, you could bring that in. Oh, there's some little yellows coming through as well. It goes against everything I normally say, which is wash your brush in between colours. Um, but actually, if you're wanting some of your colours to shine through, this is quite a good way of doing it. I'm just using the side now to get even more texture coming through. Um, if you wanted to take... I could fold that over. If you're wanting more of an edge. If you're wanting even more depth in it, you could actually add a wee bit of blue. Um, just kind of coming through on certain bits. See, it's like a shadow. It's all quite pastel -y just now. Um, because I've used quite a lot of white. Personal preference. Could even use the side. Get some going in there as well. The other thing you can do is use your brush. Um, so I've got a brush that's quite coarse at the top here, um, which is quite good for impasto as well. 
Um, if we're still mixing a bit of a pink. Oh, sorry, I've mixed purple. See those little brush strokes going on? So you're trying not to take away the paint or smooth it out. You don't want anything to be too smooth. But just using the thick paint to paint on. Stab that on there. I'm just pushing my brush about. So you're going against how you normally automatically want to use a brush. can also do as well as long as your brush is really dry is use it to sort of scrape away certain bits of paint as well so you can get a bit of texture going on And you might find you've got certain techniques that really speak to you that you would use again or you can see how they would be used like for example in say you were doing a forest and you had lots of leaves and you thought oh that would work really well that sort of technique that's what this is for So although that's smoothed out a little bit, I'm still getting the the brush strokes in here. It could definitely be thicker, but I am still coming through. You can try stippling on with your brush as well. Again, just make sure you've not got any water on your brush but having these little stipply bits on top of your already textured areas can add a bit of highlight and when we come to our last session we're painting a stormy sea and we'll use kind of stippling effects in that so you'll see how this transfers What I'm going to do now is just be more particular about where I'm scraping away with my palette knife. It can be hard to go against the grain a little bit. with where this is going now. Seeing some of these lines come through. I 
And it's just about building things up as well. If you can build up some colour here and there. And build up that texture as well. It's a messy game this, it, you will get a whole messy game of doing it. Um, right, I'm going to add a wee bit more pink. I feel like I've lost some of my pink coming through. Bring it right down to the eye. in a little bit for the eye. That went on bigger than I expected, but it's fine, we'll go around it. I'm going on with the darker purple just now, just to sort of bring a few bits out. You're going to lose bits along the way and pop them back in. And I feel like I've lost a bit of darkness to it. I'm just adding that back. I'm going with a wee bit more orange as well. I quite like the orange.
Right, now I'm going to use my brush just to go in and do a few little final details. Um, so try not lose the texture that you've got in there, but you can add little bits. For example, like little white highlights. Um, with the brush you just have a little bit more control. Depends how much of that you want to show through. Um, I like to just add in a couple of little bits just towards the end. Which I know are going to go exactly where I want it. Try and still use the thick paint, so no water on your brush. Right, I'm going to stop there. Um, I could carry on at this forever. In fact, there's one little highlight I'm going to just add in just at, right at the end. Um, so if you are doing that, just make sure your brush is really dry. Wait. Um, just going to highlight the top of this bit here. Just to get the definition between the, the thin and top of the fish. So this is one of the more fun ways to paint um, and experiment. You might love your outcome, you might not like it at all, but you've at least found some techniques that could be used on other things, or you would know what you would change next time. Oh, just put it like that. 
Um, you can add in some background as well if you wanted. You could have in like some kind of corally bits in the back. Um, if you were to add in pinky sort of shades and things, then it definitely pulls your fish together. So you can sort of add in little brush strokes like this. And it just brings a fish out and it, it stops the fish looking so bold with just a plain background. Um, I like just choosing a few different colours. Layer them up, be quite messy about it. Again, see those brush strokes coming through. Um, you can have it really thick if you want. If you wanted to really add in more in pasto, then you can. Or if you prefer just a wee bit messy, just to take the the boldness away from fish. You could have little bits coming through. Try not, um, you could have little bits come behind your fish as well actually. Try not be too, like it's just a border. Um, you want it to look as natural as possible so you might have little bits coming up. Um, you might even want to go back into your sort of light blue and add more of that into the background in different shades, um, you know, because there will be little bits that are slightly different colours. It gives it a wee bit more texture. If you've got a wee mistake on yours, then you can kind of go over it with different shades and colours. I do a bit green on the last time as well. And then when you take your masking tape off, get a lovely border. I always think things look better once you've got this bill. Not better, but they just look more finished, don't they, with your little border? And then we've got little impasto fish. I hope you enjoyed those techniques. Thanks for joining me in doing our impasto fish. Um, I hope yours has got lots of nice textures like mine does. It feels amazing. Um, and I will see you next time for some more acrylics.